Anecdotes for success. Level up with truth, meaning, trade-offs, perspective. All right. Hi, Matt. Tonight is one of our non-guest nights. And, you know, it's pretty crazy when I look at the... Uh, statistics of each episode for some reason people like it when it's just us two talking i don't i i can't figure it out uh, it doesn't make sense <laughs> I, I guess there's some gems in what we do but uh i i as always what, what we pride ourselves on when when we do these nights you don't even know what we're going to talk about yet no i don't but let me say something real quick that you just triggered on me you i gotta say i mean some of the get the, not some of the guests the guests we've had have been just so cool so you know i mean spectacular in so many ways and and you know first of all what i wanted to say was thank you for what you do to get them here and i mean you're bringing people in that we get to talk to that i literally have changed the way i i, I look at things and and perspective we talk about all that, that all the time and, and that's what they bring to the table in many ways amongst other things but certainly pers perspective but you know i leave these conversations and i just I, it takes me an hour to even consider, you know, we usually do these at night, as you know, but to even consider going to bed because my I, I'm just all jazzed up from it. And, you know, just the power of the a bit, the power of social media to, to connect with these people and what you've done to bring these people into our lives and everyone else is listening. It, it's 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 amazing. But, you know, I guess my point was to thank you for doing doing that because it's 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 awesome. Oh, I appreciate that, Matt. And there's really no ceiling to it. Like we've got guests lined up, you know, it's to, it's to the point I can say it now where we're almost getting to the point where we'll probably go weekly instead of biweekly. And yeah. we, we've talked about having some sort of hired producer to edit clips and do this sort of thing. But it, in the meantime, that that's really not why we do it right now. We just do it because of what you said. It's, it's fun for us and we hope the viewers get some, some joy and, and and some knowledge out of it so exactly. yeah cool 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 so i interrupted you but but no yeah. no that that was good so you ready so i'm, I'm gonna ready. i'm gonna say a phrase to you then i don't know if you'll roll with it or rant with it i'm not sure what you're gonna do <laughs> Where uh, <am> I? <laughs> I i hear this phrase a lot and i i want your take on it and we'll just converse with it for about 30 minutes uh cool. all right you ready yeah the process Ah, first thing, know what the first thing I think of is the Philadelphia 76ers. Uh, I was just getting, that's where it kind of came from, right? Yeah, yeah, that was the, that was the, that's when it became, the, you know, the term yeah. became, at least as yeah. far as I, I know. Yeah. And by the way, I'm a lifelong Sixers fan. The first uh, professional sporting event, no, yeah, I think it was sport. And first NBA game I ever saw was a Sixers game in Philly in like 1983 or something. So um, I've always been a Sixers fan. But, you know, so the process. So that can mean a variety of things. And, and of course, I go to the business world and the world I live in and or, or just my, my life in general, I guess, as I, I think about it. Um, it is, whatever we're doing, it is a process, right? And, it, geez, this is timely, actually. Is a good topic. I was just having a conversation uh, Sunday with some people, and my wife had a similar conversation yesterday with some separate people. We, neither one of us were together when I had it, and and it's funny because nobody, rarely do people see the process. Right? They see the result, and um, more and more in in our lives, people see the results. And, and they want to comment on those results, um, which can be flattering or whatever it is. But conversation my wife and I were having today, probably six hours ago, was where were all these people in the process? You know, and, and, and none of the, rarely were any of them patting you on the back, right? Or, or giving you the old, hey, good for you. Um, so the process is rarely seen unless you're the one in it and what what people love are results right results are sexy right results are are big houses or fancy cars or big bank accounts or 
you know, gold chains or whatever your thing is. Um, or, 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 or touchdown passes, right. Or beautiful music or, or, um, uh, successful teacher, you know, a, a long-term teacher or being a doctor, um, or whatever the case may be, but that process is what it took. And I don't care who we're talking about in the situation. That's the non-sexy part, but that's where it happens. That's the meat of it. Without that, the, you don't get the result. I mean, it's rare, 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 rare. There's only so many. I, I'm trying to think of a good example of those savants, right, who are just so good. Um, that they're so, so naturally good they couldn't have failed. There's very few of those people. And um, – I certainly don't know any. So that process is everything. And far, far, far too many people, not only do they not understand the process, they don't even want to learn about it. They just want to see. And we live in a, a day and age, you know, social media and, and, and instant gratification, right? And I want it now. And and um, we don't talk about the process nearly enough. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because it's totally overlooked, rarely discussed. And underappreciated, um, but without it, there's there's no result. There's nothing else. Yeah, and you, you know, I I see it all the time in high school kids. By the time they're in high school, it's almost like education has become a caste system. You have the underachievers, you have the overachievers, and then you have the kids. You don't even know if they're that smart. They just get pressured from their family and coaches a lot. So so you come out of high school like. Oh, you're going to go this, you're going to go do this. You guys, you're going to have great lives, but they don't have any type of process. They don't have any type of passion. They don't have any meaning. And then when they get into the real world, they like, what, what do you fall back on? If there's no like work ethic towards something, does that make sense? And I mean, I see it with, with high school athletes, they're at the top of their game and then they go to college and just think, they're going to be the same thing when they go to college, but it's, it's a whole new process when you get there. And the, the process to me is never a result. The process means you have a consistent method of how you work and, and the results come. And I don't even think you can measure what the results will be at the time you're involved in the process. But if you have a consistent work ethic, you will get results. And then the results are what other people look back on and say, oh, you're lucky or, oh, you had a good process or, oh, you trusted it. But I don't think it's linear. I, I guess I'll end with that. I don't think the process is ever linear. Me either. I don't think it's easy enough to define it or 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 or, or, or recognize what the future holds for any of us, no matter what we're doing, to say this is a – you know, unless you were to take something as, as simple, if you will, as – I want to be a lawyer and therefore the process is, you know, I have to meet these standards, if you will. But I don't think that's really what we're talking about for the most part. Oh, because in that process. All right. So you become a lawyer was is that the end game? The now end, you just good live, point. Good now you point. just live in now you just live in comfort. What we talked about pre podcast. Right. So to me, the process like I almost good feel point. like you don't even ever know where you're going to get to. But you know you want to keep growing. Yeah, excellent point. It's not like when you become that lawyer or whatever it is you want to be, then now the process is over. You've got a whole career ahead of you, and that that, that certainly is not going to be linear. Do you think ter in terms of the process and work ethic being the same thing? Are they different? How do, I mean, that just popped into my head. Well, you know, it's a – I guess no, now that I'm thinking about it, because, you know, you have employees. I see students. I have students that are bookworms and they're just people pleasers. You have employees that will work their butt off, but they're not working towards anything greater than the job. To me, the process is just the fact you're going to keep exploring. I, I used this example with the kids the other day. You're on a highway in life. Uh, hopefully it's not a highway to hell, right? <laughs> <laughs> joking that's a reference uh but you're on this highway and if you're if your work ethic's so strong you just keep going on the highway and never look at any of the exits you you don't know when something better or some other view would be good to see so the process to me is you're always working hard 
you're evaluating, you have an end game, but you also know there's going to be detours and tangents and other things. It, it, to me, it almost looks like tree branches instead of just like a straight highway. highway. Yeah, good, good, good point. Uh, it, you, this this conversation has reminded me of this kid I I've kind of helped mentor as a small business owner. He's 21. Um, graduated high school, went to college, spent a year there. Um, realized that his passion wasn't in it. Really hands on, you know, labor intensive kind of guy. A uh, hard worker, just a hard worker. And he, I know him through a family member, and he kind of sought me out after hearing my story a little bit. And he's just asked me for help. And, and, and it's one of these things, you know, he's like, uh, I, I can't pay you. And I'm like, I don't want to, don't, you don't have to pay me. I was right. like, I, I'm here to, I want to help you. Anyone who comes with that kind of attitude, right? Like, I want, he's like, I just want to succeed. I want to, I want to do, I want to be successful, but I'm going to work for it. You know what I mean? Not the, Hey, I want to succeed, but uh, you know, I'm going to be on Twitter all day. Um, he, he, he and I just spoke yesterday and um, here's a kid. And I say kid, he's 21. Um, he owns his own business. He went from a couple of years ago where he started Paul and where he is in the process now. It's, it's not, it's, it's, it's unimaginable to me at that age to have made the, the kind of progress he's made in this process. And one of the things he said yesterday, he just says, I'm just keeping, I'm just putting one foot in front of the next. Like you told me, I just keep putting one foot in front of the next. Like you told me, but looking for my opportunities. And that's, that's exactly what he's doing. And, and here's a kid who was working very seasonally with what he did by himself, had, a, had, had one piece of equipment. Now he's got like three pieces of equipment. Now he's got an employee. He told me, he said, I've doubled, I've doubled my, revi my revenue overnight by hiring someone to work for me at X amount an hour. He goes, it's just unbelievable. But now during the, wi during the winter, he can't do what he does. So he's he's very handy. He went to school for auto tech. That's what he dropped out of because he just didn't want – he wanted to do his own business. But he's like, I'm going to buy um, a lift that I can work on in the winter. What do you think? Is that a good idea? I'm like, are you going to charge for using that lift? Are you going to charge people to repair cars? Yes. Well, then buy the lift, right? Now it's an income-producing asset, right? Yeah. Now it's an income-producing asset. So – he, he had this beautiful lift he wanted to buy, and he came to me and he said, man, I found a lift. I want to buy it. It's X amount. And I said, okay, is that what it takes? Well, yeah. Are there other options? Well, yeah. Can you use them? Are they are cheaper? Yeah. Well, why would you go with that one? Well, it's kind of cool. that I said, do what you want, but I know what I'd do. Well, he bought the cheaper one, right? Now he's, now he's been doing it a month only on weekends or when it's raining out. He's already paid for the lift times three because he bought the cheaper one. He's like, it's already better. He went out and bought a brand new truck. I saw him one day. And he goes, what do you think of my new truck? I said, is it making you any money? Well, I use it for business. I go, could you have bought a similar truck to use for your business that was less than that? Well, yeah, I guess. Then why are you driving that one around? He goes, well, I don't know. I kind of, I like it. It does A, B, C, and D. I said, no, be honest. Why are you driving around? Because you think people think you're successful by driving around. Get rid of it. He got rid of it, saved himself 20 grand using the same truck. Less, less expense, right? And off he goes. But now he's doing that. Now he's doing the, the auto thing. Now he's got an employee. Here's a kid. He told me a month ago he had a goal to make X amount a year by the time he's 25. First of all, he'll double it. I promise you that. But he came to me yesterday. He goes, I've reevaluated how much I think I can make a year. I, 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 I Now I want to make X. I mean, he's, Paul, he's on the road with the tree branches. He's looking at opportunities. But he goes one foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other, and looking for opportunities. That was a long way for me to agree with what you're saying, though, about the process. Right. It's a perfect example. He doesn't know week to week, month to month, where he might be branching off. He just knows he's working. He's looking for opportunities. He's not depending on anyone to give him anything. He's going to provide value to his customers, and he's going to win because of it. Well, it's like anything, kids, trees, any type of growth, you don't see it if you're around it every day. 
But if if you see someone plant a tree and then you come back 10 years later, you're like, holy cow, that thing sprouted. Or you see a nephew you haven't seen in five, six years, right? Yeah. And it's the same thing. You don't need the best... You don't need the best soil and water to grow that tree. I, I've watched trees and grass grow out of concrete and blacktop for crying out loud. Like, yeah. because every day, the, like those types of plants don't know any better. But us people, boy, the first barrier we get, oh, well, apparently that wasn't a good process. I better start over. Like, to me, the process is consistency. I mean, every day added up becomes your story. So if you just do, uh, so I had this talk with kids today, uh, you know, what, what we were in high school, Matt, and we weren't exactly like 98 students, right? I, I was a 90 student. We're not going to say what you were. It doesn't matter, but, but that's not the point. But, but the point was that we all as people, whenever there's a due date, yeah, we pride ourselves on being able to handle the pressure and get the job done in the time. But the true growth in life comes on the items that don't have due dates, right? Like building a business or, or health or taking that trip or wh whatever. So uh, I was telling kids today, if you took 10 minutes a day to work on what you're passionate about, or if you took two hours a week to do it on a Sunday, you're going to have more growth if you just do the 10 minutes a day every single day. Because that's the process. And and you know what would happen. It wouldn't be 10 minutes. All of a sudden, it'd be 15 or it'd be 20. But it's it's part of their identity every single day. But when you just do it for two hours, no human being really puts an intense commitment into two hours of anything. Like, it, it, it's, it's the daily grind that gets you through it. So I hope I didn't rant too much. But to me, the process is the fact that you just stay consistent every single day. I couldn't agree more. I think I think you that's such an important part of it. It is that daily grind, that commitment. And, 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 and not long after you're making that commitment, it's it's part of who you are. It's part of your identity, as you said. That is who you are. I, I am I could say I'm a, a lot of things and, and whatever they might be, but like part of my identity is that I work out five days a week, right? I I I don't work out Sunday for ten for for six hours. I work out five days a week for a half hour. Right, that is who I am, and that that doesn't get that doesn't get thrown out because I have a tummy ache or because I had to work longer than I thought or because it's cold outside or because I had to to shovel the driveway today. I still have to do that. That is who I am every single day. Um, I show up, I go to work every single day. It's who I am. Um, and, and I'm just using me as an example, of course, but that that becomes your identity. And then before you know it, you're not 22 anymore, you're 42. And that working out every day, that that showing up every day, that creates that that creates other things, whether they be opportunities or just value to you that you couldn't possibly do if you weren't doing it every single day. And I'll use a, a, a great analogy that speaks to your world that um, I think everybody should pay attention to your other work. You're not your teaching world, but I, I work out 20 minutes a day, every day, put $50, put $50 away every week into whatever investment it is and you want to talk about growth? You want to talk about looking back in 20 years, what that's going to mean to you? $50 a week or whatever the, that number is. Talk about the process, right? You're, 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 what, who, yeah. who said the most powerful thing in the universe is, is compound interest? I don't know. It was like Ben Franklin. Might been, might, no, <laughs> Ben uh, Mark, Franklin. I was going to say Mark Twain or I think Eli I Whitney. Thought, I don't know. I thought, I'll look it up. I thought it was Warren Buffett. It's the seventh wonder of the world. Yeah, someone someone said that it's it, someone smart, and and they were and they, they were they were right. I mean, you look at that, and I started teaching my daughter about compound interest. Uh, Albert Einstein, and it's not the seventh; it's the eighth wonder. But so we almost had it right. <laughs> right? Who's smarter than Albert Einstein? Very few. Um, <laughs> the, 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 but but the point: it's the same kind of principle, isn't it? That yeah. you don't you don't you don't put a million dollars away today or, or or in 20 years you put fifty dollars away every week today and then you see what, what what I don't know what you would have in 20 years I don't know if you have that access 
to that quickly for you. But but yeah. uh, it would depend on the interest rate, not blah, blah, blah. But my but the point's the same. You don't get to be you don't get to be the the the, the success again, whatever that means to you. At 30, if at 15 you weren't doing anything for it, or or at 20 or whatever the time frame is. I mean, again, yes, we could all pull the 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 people who who happen to nail it really young. Those are fun to talk about. They're 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 not they're not the stories of the normal the average person. The average person can do a lot more if they follow the process. If they put one foot in front of each other, in front of another. Day in and day out, day in and day out, just keep going, just keep going, and you will be shocked where you sit at the end. But but if your answer is, I want it easy, I don't want to make a sacrifice, I, I, I want comfort, which we talked about, like you said before, comfort's a killer, I want comfort, you 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 won't end up there, you won't. And and um, so those th th those steps in that process – it's exponential, right? It's just like compound interest. It's exponential. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my old analogy. I used it in class this week. The process is like walking up the flight of stairs with a yo-yo. You've heard me say that before. Yeah. Uh, the the, the yo-yo is up and down, up and down, up and down. I mean, the range is as high and as low as you want it. I mean, if you're six foot tall, that could be the range of the yo-yo, right? But at the end of the day, if you're on 100 flights of stairs, when you get to the top of those stairs, it doesn't matter what the range of the yo-yo is. Because, because the bottom of the yo-yo at flight 100 is, is so much higher compounded than the top of the yo-yo at flight 1. But a lot of us, we, we've all been there. We get so caught up in the everyday up and down, we don't understand if, if what we're even doing is the process. And in a minute, so... I don't know if we realize we're this smart matter, if it's just lucky, but at the end of this, I'm going to, we've, we've come up with a couple of words that basically explain the process and, and that'll be your closing thoughts. But for now, we're, we're just going to keep talking. Right. Well, the, one of the things you said is, you know, the, the beautiful part about the process, right, is it doesn't have to be emotional. It's just, and in the daily, our days are emotional, right? It shouldn't be emotional. It should You're be right. emotional. Yeah. Our, da our days are emotional. Today, I told you before, and I've had a couple days in a row. They've been terrible. You know what I mean? Just there's things that going on that, that I don't I don't like. In the process, they are a blip. They're, I won't even remember them in a month, right? But today, oh, boy, what a what a bad day. What a that that's That's not how... Uh, that's not how you get to success by living how I, I was today in those emotions. It's getting up every day and just keep going. So I'm glad you mentioned that because it just triggered my thought. The process shouldn't be emotional, right? It's just, and I, it shouldn't be emotional. And it's, I love identity. It's just like who I am, who I am, who I, this is who, this is who Paul is. This is who Matt is. He gets up and he goes and does this day in and day out. No exceptions or very, 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 very few, you know, exceptions. I mean, uh, you know, Cam and his journal, his gratitude journal that we've talked about. Yeah. Paul, I get up every morning, every morning that I'm home because, I, you know, I, I, there are mornings I don't when I'm traveling or, or whatever. Right. But I get up every morning and I wake up and I write my gratitude. It's just it's just become who I am, right? And and frankly, if I don't do it, I, I feel weird. I feel there's something wrong, feels wrong about me. And those are the things that get you to a, a level of success that you can't see if you're just setting if you're if you're just sitting here and go, well, in ten years I want to be this. If you're not doing those day to day things, if it doesn't become who you are, you're never going to get there. I I bought those same cardboard journals that I gave you that yeah. I think I gave you one for all my students. And right now, every, I, I have it at school. So every day I'm at school, I write in it. I just leave it there because that's my process. I mean, I don't want to bring it back and forth. Yeah. Uh, I gave it at all the kids. I don't I don't ask if they're writing in it. I I talk about it every day. And. Uh, I came up with it. So the, the author next week we're going to have on, okay, yeah. wrote a book, The Consistency Pill, that I just finished. And 
uh, he made a quote that that I, I didn't realize I was doing this with the kids. It's like, don't convince people, outlast people. Don't convince and, people, outlast people? Yeah, just okay. keep, and I think that's part of the process. Like, he just does his thing every day, every day, every day. And he, he's into sales and marketing. So his point okay. is, all right, if if you come to somebody you think is going to be a great fit for your company and they don't come on board, don't keep trying to convince them. Just outlast them. Keep living your life, and they're going to see the changes in your life. And if they're the right fit, eventually you're going to outlast them, and they're going to come back to you. And so that's what I do with the students. I'll read out of my journal every day. I talk about it. You know, they're 17 years old. They're, they're still fine in their way. But yeah. but I keep saying, if you have nothing to write about, then I really feel sorry for you because you're at the time in your life where you could put every day, I want to be an astronaut or I want to be a firefighter or I want to be anything. And if you're not writing anything, like what's the process you're looking forward to? So the journal's huge. Yeah, I, I, I love it. I love it. It, it, it. And and it gets harder in a way, but also easier in a way. It gets harder in a way because, you know, I can only be so happy. I can only write every morning how happy I am that, you know, I, I love my wife and daughter. But but it makes you it, – what true. it's done for me, it's made me change my mindset, right? It's made me look at things. Yeah. And I can't wait to talk to Cam about it. It makes me look at things. What is gratitude, right? What I used to think of as gratitude – now I think of another way. Sometimes I think I'm glad I had the, the tough day I had yesterday because it opened my eyes to this. It's made me see I have to do better at that or whatever the case may be. Um, but again, it, it, it provides an opportunity for me to think differently, which is which is really why I appreciate it so much. Not because I, I get to say how grateful I am for my life. It's because right. I get to see things in a different in a different light. But you, going back to where you were said with your students – yeah, if, if if you can't think of why you're grateful today, what's what what are you doing in your life that looks like meaning, that looks like a process to get you somewhere you want you want to go? And if you're not looking in those terms, then 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 you're 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 just selling yourself short. I don't want to be critical of people. I don't want to say you're 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 going to be a loser. Or you're going to be anything. I, I'm not trying to be critical. What I'm trying to do is for someone to say, would look introspectively and say, okay, I, I need to look at I need to look at things differently. I'm I don't have a process. I don't have a goal. I don't have something I'm trying to accomplish. And um, if if you're missing that in your life, you're missing more than you can possibly imagine. Because um, it's not about having stuff. It's about doing stuff. It's about being something. Uh, and and I, I think that I think that for most of us, I think that's what we really want. I really do. I think the number of people I know who do have stuff, who I who I talk to, who don't value that. What they valued was a process. What they valued was a journey. What they valued was the ups and downs and the people they met and 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 the. the you know the process, Paul. The process start to start where you where you where you started here. There's so much joy in it, and in in not every day. I'm having a couple of days where I'm not finding a lot of joy right now, Paul. With some of the things happening in my, you know, with with been going on, but that is part of the process. And when I look back on this week, like I look back on last year, I know I had bad days last year too. But man, do I consider that 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 process and what I'm trying to do meaningful and important yeah so a couple things uh we need to have cam back on as one of our repeat guests and i i mean i i I know he would do it we'll 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 find a time for that you better so so here's what i've come up with with all this and i want your thoughts on it so i think we established when you asked me the question the process isn't hard work that'd be like a hamster just running on a wheel with no purpose like hamsters they work really hard. I really feel like that's what most people go through life doing. Mm. And I don't I don't know how that creates happiness. I think a hamster just thinks it has to keep running faster and faster, faster. I don't know. I'm not a researcher and I don't have the mind of a hamster. And maybe that's good or bad. I, I might have a lesser mind than that. I don't know. But Well, not but, to interrupt, but to, uh, an analogy, we hear the term rat race all the time. The, the, the yeah, rat same race. thing. That, that's a great... That's a great segue, I guess, to that same term. 
Yeah, and and most people I know are in the rat race, and the, it does. I don't know what it achieves in terms of meaning and some of those things. But keep going, please. I just wanted to. Throw no, that no. Out. So we, but you know, you had no idea to our viewers. I love these podcasts because you have no idea what we're going to talk about. I just think of a phrase, and I don't really research it. Uh, so here's what we've come up with with the process. The process is about working hard being consistent, uh, finding and or keeping your identity, chasing or, or, or pursuing your meaning, taking action every day with no guarantees what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I love that. And, and one of the things that maybe this is in there, maybe it's not, but one of the things that you said earlier, and maybe it's part of the no guarantees what's going to happen, but you you don't you're gonna zig and zag right you're you're not just the highway analogy. There's gonna be detours. There's gonna be zigs and zags, and to, to to know to expect that and know that's part of it, and that's sometimes the best part of it, sometimes not. But that's you know, and I think you were kind of alluding to that. But I I, I don't I just think that's an important piece of it. Well, so we're gonna use an analogy. All our Bills fans weren't happy this week when the Bills lost, right? No, they were not. <laughs> no, and I – so I don't know if you saw the clip of the offensive coordinator afterwards, Ken Dorsey, going ballistic. I do. I, I'm and I was – and I, I get – listen, I get that. I've I've yelled and been upset as a coach. But it's a process. It's a 17-week season where you just want to get better every day, right? Sure. And I was telling my students in school – I think the Bills got better that day. Like they they battled, they grinded, and Von Miller, who's had the world cha the Super Bowl experience with, I think it was the Rams. Rams, yeah, yep. I, I, I'm not quoting him directly, and, but and the like, Broncos. He was a Bronco, yeah, I believe. That, that's he, right. He was a Broncos as well. I love him. He's like I, I'm parap paraphrasing what he said. He's like I'm proud of my coaches, my teammates, because you know what? That was good medicine for us Sunday. Yeah, yeah. And that's what, it, like, that's the process. Like, of course, do you want to win the game? Well, that's the goal of mm -hmm. everything you do in life. But you have to understand that's not what's going to happen. But the Bills, we'll, we'll just roll with that. They're trying to be consistent and they're trying to find their identity and they have a meaning of winning a championship sure. like any, any NFL team does. And and they're taking action, but there's no guarantees. And that's their process. So I'm proud of myself that I just thought of that. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I, I like that analogy. I like that. And sometimes the losses, most times, is where the where the learning and the growth comes from, Right. Yeah, it, with all great coaches, whether it's the Popoviches yeah. or Belichick's or Tomlin's, I love them in their press conferences afterwards because the the sports writers want a story on what went wrong, and these guys just don't give. They're like, basically, dude, that's our process. Like, but, but, the standard's the standard. This is what we do. Like, it's well, just happening. It goes right back to what you said at the, 20 minutes ago. It's unemotional to them, right? When you see them in there, uh, they're, 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 they're usually not emotional at all, right? So that's another a good piece of this. The, and I think of the Belichicks and the Tomlins, and, and there's many others, of course. But you're right. right. It's like we came out. We did, you know, we did. We, there, there's no screaming and yelling and the refs did this and so-and-so did that. And there's no, It's not emotional because it is a process. And when, when part of a process, there's certain things you're going to expect and losses are large losses are part of that process so so it's easy not to be emotional right when you when you understand that it's part of a process it's easy not to be emotional in fact i i, I could take that advice for this week you know i was emo i have been emotional this week over some things when i know full well paul that the things happening this week are entirely part of the process of the, of of what i do for you know for, for a living so you know i should be better than that i should understand that why are you getting emotional emotional love about these things when this is the process? I, I could I could certainly take a lesson but from But again, the day by days, that's where the emotion comes in. That's the yo-yo, right? The yeah. long term is just the flight of stairs. And uh you know, the journal keeps you grounded after an emotional day. Yeah. And and you know, 
my family, you know, my daughters were into athletics. We've talked about that in the past. There's so many ups and downs in the process. And when people, when they're positive and when I'm positive as a coach, people are like, well, how can you be so positive all the time? And it's the process. Like I don't run around like a bobblehead oblivious to everything going around me. I just know I have a perfect track record of getting through every bad day. And right. that's what the process is about. Right. So. Yeah, it is. A, the, the, no doubt the that, again i love i love these talks because it's like yeah. talking through all it as as you know and as anyone probably can tell where this is not scripted in the least and that's that's the fun of it again one of the reasons i love doing what we do is because i feel like i come out better when 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 we're done talking you know whether it's mm-hmm. you and i one-on-one or or, or, our, or our guests and and that's that's part of my process, Paul. That's mm-hmm. that's why we do this. It's you know, it's 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 not for the millions of dollars we get paid for it. It's it's because it 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 makes me a better it makes me a better thinker, um, a better business person, a better a better friend, a better husband, uh, a better a better member of society. As far as I'm concerned, it makes me better, and and those things are all important to me. So um, that also is 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 part of my process. Amen. So we're going to end on that. The process is about working hard to be consistent, find your identity, pursue your meaning, take action, uh, uh, restrain the day-to-day emotion to understand that long-term there's a bigger plan in life that doesn't involve the emotion that makes you a better person in general. That's the process. Let's hope the Sixers are listening because they're still <laughs> still bad. <laughs> yeah, they 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 obviously threw those files away. They weren't on a hard drive anywhere. So, uh, <laughs> hey Matt, as always, it's a pleasure, and and we'll see you next time. Sounds good. Thank you. Yeah. Bye.